So again, tonight is why minority women faces harsher prejudice than minority men. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna just ease into this topic and I'm gonna jump in like like the rest of the the uh, the um, other topics. I mean, today's the last day of women's uh, uh, women's month. Um, so I think you know in our organization we need to address this as one of our, our bylaws, one of our goals is to end sexism as well. So let me go ahead and share my screen. And for those of you again, if you on Instagram, if you want to join. You could jump in, just go to www.nracismforever.org, just www.nracismforever.org, click on the link, and uh, you could join the Zoom for free. So, all right, here we go. Where's that right there? Um, so, pull up two topics. As we talked about this topic, I pulled up two things which is kind of relevant to, to what's going on. Uh, this is a, a recent article, if you can see it, from uh, the, com the conversation. Uh, I guess this is a, a news blog. And uh, they talked about on their little topic. It came out uh, on the 28th, which is, um, uh, was, I want to say Saturday. And uh, this past Saturday. And their topic is the model mi minority myth hides the racist and sexist violence experienced by Asian women. I'm going to repeat it. It says the model minority myths hides the racist and sexist violence experienced by Asian women. And I'm going to go into the topic. I'm going to go into the whole article. I'm going to just touch on the first part, which is six women of Asian descent were among eight people tragically killed in the tragic shooting on March 16th in Atlanta. The initial denial by the Atlanta police that, it, that this was a hate crime, along with some news reports highlighting that, uh, highlighting the offender's version of the incident, invoked a swift reaction by communities all over North America. Many spoke of the invisibility of anti-Asian racism. One of the reasons for the invisibility of anti-Asian racism is inextricably connected to the model uh, minority myth. Uh, the model minority myth focus on prevailing stereotypes of Asians as hardworking, independent, intelligent, and economically uh, prosperous. But the stereotypes, while seemingly positive, hide many issues, including anti-Asian racism, poverty, labor abuse, and psychological needs. It despaired the realities of working class Asian women lives. All right, that's that. That's um, that's pretty much what this all got to say about Asian women and and their and I guess their take on um, on the the uh, on the the racial disparities in the Asian culture. Okay, keep that in mind. So now I'm going to go to an article that was written. I think it was back in 2000. This article right here is, um, is an article that came out for called The Black Woman and Sexual Violence, which I just read to you about Asian violence against Asian women. But let me read to you about the Black Woman and Sexual Violence. And again, this came out in 2017. It's online. Uh, it was from now.org. So if you go to now.org and type in uh, Violence against Black women. That's how I found this. This this PDF will come up. Uh, the statistics on U.S. women and violence are staggering. Now this is 2017. On average, one in three women are victims of uh, intimidate partner. Uh, I'm sorry. One in three women are victims of intimate partner violence, and one in five women are victims of sexual assault. These numbers are. These numbers underscore the epidemic of sexual violence in the U.S., which disproportionately impact women of color, immigrant women, LGBTQIA plus women, and disabled women. For African women, for African American women, sexual assaults and violence are incredibly per persuasive issues that routinely go unreported 
and under address. Over 18% of African American women will be sexually assaulted in her lifetime. And unfortunately, these percentage, percentage only accounts for the number of women who report the abuse. In order to address the issue of sexual violence against Black women, it is imperative that we look at the unique barriers faced by African American women on a political, economic, and cultural levels. Now, you know what I'm trying to do here. Well, what I'm trying to do is just, just, just propose, right? I'm comparing two different groups of Asian women and African American women, and to just give you all a sense of pretty much um, what is it that both groups are experiencing. And so I'm gonna jump here down here real quick and we'll start the discussion. Uh, Let me just go, where is it? Okay, numerous studies have found that there are, there is a lack of resources available, a lack of resources. Now, I want, I want you to listen to what I'm about to say. Numerous studies have found that there is a lack of resources available for young girls in the juvenile justice system that address the physical and psychological scars of sexual assault. This is further extra, ah, excavated when acknowledging the unique culture nuances of girls of color. What, what's, more, what's more rights for girls study found that many of the young women who are in juvenile detention facilities are there because of behaviors of action stemming from the undertreated emotional ramifications of their abuse. This means that their prior abuse related trauma is un, unaddressed and worse still, leaves them vulnerable to further abuse. The system is referred to as the sex abuse to prison pipeline. So they call this the sex abuse to prison pipeline. All right, so now let's talk. Now I've described what, uh, what someone said a couple of days ago about the myths and that hides the racist and sexual sexist violence experienced by Asian women, and I just read to you an article or, or research back in what three, four, four years ago on black women's sexual violence. So here's what I'm gonna say. Violence is bad compared to whatever, what, what groups you're talking about, male, female, um, uh, L, LGBTQ community, doesn't matter. Gay community, doesn't matter. Why? Why is it that y'all feel um, that, um, I mean, we know why, but we really need to talk about it. Why women are uh, d discriminated uh, worse than men, than black men. So go, what, what are your thoughts? What did you say? White women are discriminated against? I'm saying that we know there's a, there's a level of discrimination when it comes to women, when it comes to, well, Enjoy. pretty much violence, right? Yeah. Violence. For women. Yeah. For women, period. But then when yeah. it comes to the, the hierarchy of that violence, right? You got white women on top or Caucasian women, and then you got everyone else below, which mm -hmm. I've seen that in real time. I've seen, I mean, uh, growing, look, growing up- White mm -hmm. women are suppressed too. They are. Yeah, they're, they are. Mm -hmm. They're suppressed and, and beat and, and, and violence, uh, violence uh, appropriated against them as well, everybody. I mean, all women, for one thing. I, I think all women. Um, I think the problem with Black, the thing with, with, with Black women uh -huh. is that um, we may tend to stay in those situations a little longer and a little more because um, we have a protective nature, okay? Yeah. And we know that the system deals very harshly with our black men. So we tend to take stuff and be involved in kind of covering up or, or really trying to manage things ourselves rather than subject our men to this unequal prison you know, justice system, because the justice system deals so harshly 
with 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 black men. So be, being that we birth them, we are the givers of life. Then we consider that before we call the police or we deal with them ourselves. And a lot of it, unfortunately, does not get reported. Right. And it doesn't get reported because of our protective nature. Whereas you have women think differently. I don't care. I'm turning them in. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. But in general, in our communities and in our livelihood, especially those activist group and you know black groups and things, they they tend to look down on you when you throw your uh, when you throw your your brother, your your husband, your your uncle, your into the system. Because basically, from from the beginning of time, black men didn't really have to do anything to be thrown in the system. Right. You know, they get thrown in the system for walking up the street. You know, and so us being black women and having that protective nature, we hide these things, and we we and and it's a psychological. It is a psychological uh, damage to to our brains. I mean, it's it's. Um, what do you call it? A post postpartum, uh, not postpartum. Um, PTSD. Yeah, PTSD. I mean, we walk around with this PTSD because we 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 have this two edged thing that we're constantly fighting against. You know, um, when it comes to the Asian women, I'm sure they've been suppressed too. But if you notice in the Asian communities, the women they're more outspoken and boisterous and they take the lead a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, and some Asian, I mean, most Asians now when it comes to money and dealing with business and they tend to be strong and forceful and the men are, I don't know what the men do at home, but you know, in a business or in an atmosphere where they're surrounded in other groups or cultures and stuff, they tend to take over the, the Asian women there. So um, I hate the fact that people are going around, you know, lashing out at these Asian people. I don't even, I, you know what? I don't even understand it. I, I, to me, I mean, I know they say that it's been happening for a while. I know that, but it hasn't been broadcasted. It hasn't been acknowledged. It has not, not to the extent that it is right now. And I'm wondering, is this a result of that Trumpism stuff? 